the subject today, I mean, I'm going to speak in, in English, uh, but if you want to um, speak about the, the market overview of the forestry sector in Wales, uh, I'm going to tell you a bit about myself and I'm going to run through a fairly quick presentation um, in, in about 10 to 15 minutes. And then hopefully we can, uh, we can receive some questions and uh, hopefully I can answer, answer those. So um, just a little bit about myself. First of all, um, my name is Ewan Parry. I'm a chartered forester uh, and I'm chair of the Institute of Chartered Foresters in Wales. Um, my role, my current role is uh, area manager for South Wales and the marches with Till Hill Forestry. Um, I've been in forestry and the timber industry now for over 25 years and I'm currently responsible for about 8,000 hectares of forestry um, in South Wales and the Marches. Um, I manage lots of different types of woodlands, coniferous, broadleaf, new plantations, predominantly uh, commercial conifer plantations. I, and for those of you who don't know much about the Institute, um, Institute of Chartered Foresters, um, it's a professional organisation um, with a role to raise professional standards in forestry and arboriculture uh, in order to promote the management of trees and woodlands. So that's a little bit about me. Uh, in terms of the subject I'm going to discuss today, well, uh, what is our timber industry in Wales? Lots of questions. Uh, what is it? How big is it? Uh, can I be a part of it? Um, how do I find out uh, about the industry and is there any support out there? So I, I'm just going to run through some background initially. Um, Welsh timber industry uh, is estimated to be worth £429 million, pounds, employing 9,000 people. Um, I think this comes as a, a little bit of a shock to a lot of people, but the scale uh, of, of the, and in the value of the, of the industry, but also the amount of people that are employed. And, and many of these people, we must remember, are from the rural community of Wales uh, and often from, from farming backgrounds. Sorry, uh, Ewan, I'll just cut across there. Um, did you have a presentation or, or screens? Yeah. Or, or we're not seeing yes. the screens. You're not seeing it? No. Okay, hold on. Okay, there is a... Um, Bit of a gurgling sound in the background as well. Man, as soon as I came to the middle, but in our system, Zoom here in Danny Ricard traffic, they were here no blind. Let's see, but the one I'm in Edgar Place, to the middle, but the sign and and go here. Um, I was only carrying line. Yeah, I'm sorry, you want to hold it. Got the other one. And then, and then, as they can read the screen. Yeah, I'm in the screen. Apologies for that. Um, right. Um, as I was saying, yeah, the scale of scale of the industry in Wales um, is is significant. Uh, 129 million, 29,000 people. Um, in terms of Welsh woodlands, um, they occupy 14% of the land area in Wales. Um, this is. We often have conversations about uh, development of woodlands and planting new woodlands and uh, we've got to maintain land for producing food which is essentially important um, but um, we only have 14 percent of the land covered in trees uh, which um, falls way below the european average of 39 percent um, the Welsh Government have set a target to reach 19% and, and uh, the talk that we hear very often these days about planting new woodlands is to uh, is set to achieve uh, that 19%. In terms of the species, uh, the main productive species in Wales are Sitka spruce, uh, making up 30% and a, and a significant contribution to the market, um, and Douglas fir and larch, uh, probably the ones that follow Sitka. Uh, in terms of hardwoods, 10% um, uh, in terms of oak, it makes up 10%, ash making up 7%, uh, which th these are the majority of hardwood species in, in more, what's more of our native woodlands. Uh, and 80% of the timber used in Wales is imported. Again, we only make, uh, we only produce 20% of our own requirements uh, and that uh, presents an opportunity for uh, 
anyone thinking of entering the timber industry uh, when there's a marketplace of uh, 80% uh, to go at. It's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's encouraging. Wood products in the UK are estimated to be worth uh, 7.5 billion. Uh, and that was in 2016. Again, just demonstrates the scale of the industry compared to other industries. And it's uh, no doubt a significant contribution to GDP here in Wales and also in the UK. Uh, and we in the UK are the second biggest net importer of forest products in the world after China. So we consume a lot of timber. Um, and I think where the opportunity lies is to produce uh, more timber and timber products and also to add value to them. In terms of the current market position today, um, demand for timber outstrips supply. Uh, this undoubtedly will increase standing sale prices over the short term. Uh, all products uh, types have been sh have shown to increase, um, have shown an increase during the third quarter of 2020. So there's a strong demand across all product ranges. Um, just over 12 months ago, we, we saw uh, the third highest percentage rise in timber prices recorded in the past 35 years, uh, with an increase of 46.2%. Now, you know, that is significant growth in value. Um, and this uh, followed the year, the year previous where there was a rise of 21.4%. Other significant rises in, in, in times gone, in 2010, we saw 48.7% increase in values and in 2007, 50.2% increase in value. So since 2000, um, timber prices have increased by 235%. Um, and again, just demonstrating uh, where, where the market is going, uh, where the industry is going, lots of positivity. Construction demand underpins, under, is underpinned by house building. Uh, uh, targets in the UK, as we've, we've heard very recently, uh, there's a strong um, drive towards house building in the UK uh, to deal with uh, increased population. Uh, and this is replicated in both China and USA, as well as other developing economies. Biomass currently offers strong demand uh, for small diameter timber in the UK and elsewhere. It is well reported uh, that UK is very reliant on timber imports, but what we've got to remember is that the industry is, the UK wood processing industry in the UK is, is, is high tech, and has invested significant amounts of money. Um, so although we talk about the reliance on uh, timber imports, we do have a very high tech industry who are ready to uh, increase the uh, market share. This is a, a graph just to depict some of the, um, uh, some of the trends that we've seen since the early nineties. Um, in the green, you can see the sawmill sector uh, steady increase in uh, in, in volume timber uh, procured. Um, the pulp mills, which is the yellow line, uh, has uh, receded somewhat uh, with the closure of some of the pulp mills and, and that relates really to, to the conversion of, of pulp manufacture to uh, some, some recycling uh, production taking, taking the place of virgin fiber. Uh, wood panel uh, products uh, have been pretty consistent along the way. Uh, as long as, uh, as well as fencing, um, but you can see a significant increase um, from 2008 in, in wood fuel uh, consumption. Um, it's, uh, it's been a, a step change there in terms of uh, usage, uh, and then there's some other export markets which uh, fluctuate. In terms of the UK software supply where the forecast is. Uh, current UK, UK projections averages about 15 million cubic metres against the current harvest of about 11.4 cubic metres. Uh, so therefore we're running out below capacity. Um, Wales uh, shows a reduction in output uh, going forward. Um, and uh, this is uh, one of the primary, primary reasons for um, calling for more planting of woodlands uh, 
in addition to the obviously the, the uh, climate change drive which we're seeing today um, but you know there's a there's a strong drive now to, to plant new woodlands and uh, that's going to be really important for, for the future of the industry in terms of uh, current state of play in terms of logs today uh, and software products um, logs make up about 60 percent of the uh, of the market um, and these are uh, timbers which are 18 centimeters uh, plus uh, bars make up about 20 percent 14 to 18 centimeter and both of these categories need to be straight uh, fencing uh, makes up about 10 percent and uh, there's two product categories here eight centimeters to 12 centimeters and 14 to 20 centimeters in the posts and, and, and um, yeah Stakes. Uh, and biofuel currently making up uh, 10% uh, and sizes um, pretty much take any size these days. So look, in terms of prices, solar prices will be around about 15% higher than bars, and bars being about 30% higher than biofuel. Uh, fencing approximately the same as, as bars, um, so it gives you a guide as to where the prices are. Um, in terms of uh, against each other uh, and you know obviously future demand looks very strong as long as uh, as long as we can meet uh, demand uh, and planting new woodlands is critical to this uh, to enable the markets to uh, or the, the processing industry to invest in terms of hardwoods um, we've got uh, strong demand for firewood um, has been uh, a very good increase in, in values uh, for firewood as well over the past decade um, and uh, yeah I, I, you know, firewood will, will, will going forward I think it's going to stay strong and uh, as long as it's processed and the quality is, is good uh, I, I believe this market will, will maintain itself to be a strong player. Uh, in terms of quality saw logs uh, I think they will always sell uh, especially oak and sweet chestnuts um, if you're able to produce quality timber, um, they will um, see exceptionally good value their prices and, and strong competition. Um, uh, but um, yeah, uh, and there's also opportunity for small diameter timber to, to present added value products in beams, lintels, fencing, flooring, etc. Uh, lots of added value opportunities there uh, for, for uh, people. Um, who want to come into the industry or are already in the industry. And in terms of drying and sawing uh, facilities, these tend to be a lot smaller in scale in terms of, uh, compared to the softwood market, um, just due to the size of uh, the, and the volume of the timber that's uh, processed in Wales. Um, but again, as I say, hardwood markets presents a huge opportunity, especially farm woodlands. Many, many, many of them are underutilized. Um, haven't been managed uh, for a long time and um, uh, yeah it's it's uh, you know it's something that every every woodland owner should look upon as an opportunity and, uh, and look to our value and manage, manage the woodlands. Uh, just to, to talk about what influences the price is offered uh, for parcels of timber um, well haulage to the marketplace whatever the market may be whether it's the saw logs the bars the fencing biomass it's how far you are from that market will will have an impact on on the price that you're offered uh, average prices in wales uh, range from about 10 to 12 pounds a ton on, on average obviously there are fluctuations uh, and it's all dependent on distance uh, in terms of contractor costs uh, this very much depends on many factors and the contractor will come in and assess the sites in advance before providing a price and they'll need to assess terrain, uh, the distance that they need to forward the timber out to the roadside to get it to the lorry, uh, the size of the timber, how much timber they can cut, um, how efficient they are at cutting that timber and getting it to the roadside, and obviously ground conditions, whether they're, you know, it's a very difficult wet site or whether it's uh, well, well tracked and, uh, uh, and is able to stand up to all, all types of uh, weather conditions. And then in terms of the values uh, between six and 40 pounds a ton, uh, there's a huge range from something which is very motor manual, uh, but when, 
motor manual in terms of um, you know skyline uh, um, operations to have us the forwarder, uh, which are very mechanised. In terms of um, current markets, uh, prices, uh, well, they're affected by global imports, as we've spoken about before. It can have a significant effect on uh, on local prices, and uh, more recently, we've seen you know up to thirty percent uh, impact uh, on prices um, when there is a significant import of um, cheaper sawn timber into the UK. Access, a uh, very important part of uh, woodlands. Um, if you've got woodlands, uh, then to have them well roaded will increase the value of your timber. Uh, to have good access is, is critical and added value. Uh, and investment in, in access, uh, I would always uh, recommend is, is, uh, is well, well worth it. And of course, timber quality um, always pays to manage your woodland uh, well. Um, and to seek professional advice and management uh, um, and to invest money in managing your woodlands uh, from the early stages all the way through um, and to maintain good management will see you achieve good values at uh, harvest. Um, in terms of species, always have high demand for spruce uh, followed by Douglas fir and always spruce and larch in terms of soft, softwood uh, sectors. Um, and then specialist markets um, for uh, maybe some western red cedar, coast redwoods, uh, other, other softwood species, along with oaks, with chestnut, beech, sycamore, etc. Uh, the hardwood species uh, in terms of logs and so on. Uh, and of course, one item which affects the uh, price is the breakout. Uh, and what the breakout is, is the percentage of log within a tree, uh, the percentage of bar fencing bio etc so the higher your log percentage um, the greater value uh, and, and, and uh, works its way down through the product ranges so um, you need to aim to to grow your timber to the optimum size uh, and the optimum quality and as I mentioned uh, professional management and advice is critical of that um, and if you can choose a chartered forester then obviously you're, you're uh, you're given impartial professional advice in those uh, in the field of forest management. So what does the future hold? Um, well, we obviously need to plant more woodlands uh, to ensure we take advantage of all these trends uh, and timber use. Um, there's no doubt that that's going to be going forward. It's going to be critically important. Uh, we need to ensure that we manage the woodlands to the highest possible standards, ensure we invest in quality ensure good stocking densities in the early years when you're planting woodlands uh, make sure that you maintain those woodlands to the, to the optimum stocking density in those early years and maintain that all the way through uh, thinning is important along with infrastructure as i've mentioned uh, stock exclusion uh, for for developing woodlands is important along with items like high pruning for hardwoods uh, squirrel control for, for the broadleaf species is absolutely critical, uh, especially in, from the years 10 onwards. Um, I think we need to consider the squirrel control uh, as a future cost. Uh, and if you're considering planting broadleaf woodlands, then uh, from years 10 onwards, then squirrel uh, control is going to be critical uh, to the success of your crop. Uh, and to ignore this, um, you know. More CUC values than you expected, um, and you know, looking at climate change and everything else, uh, mixed productive woodlands. Um, I think is where we need to be heading. Farmers, um, you all have existing woodlands. Many of you have existing woodlands which need managing, uh, or you have land uh, which is suitable for planting. Uh, and I think farmers are well placed to enter. Uh, the, the timber industry if they are not already taking part uh, and I would hope that um, uh, you all could uh, take the opportunity to just just take a look at the you know what what opportunities present themselves in terms of planting or, or managing uh, timber uh, and, and woodlands uh, as part of your farming business um, we see over the continent many farms um, having uh, multiple 
parts to their business and uh, I think uh, timber should be uh, brought into to many farms in this country as well. And an emerging market is obviously carbon and we, we hear a lot about carbon and the potential to sell carbon. It's a, it's a very exciting market, so it's a very young market, but it's something which potentially in the future um, many of you will be able to, um, to, to, to sell into. Uh, and then uh, adding value, then you know, many of you out there are adding value to timber on farm, uh, whether it be you know, just uh, producing firewood or uh, sawing beams, etc., or building, uh, taking it through to end product. So some of the organisations that can help you, uh, just a quick flash really of, uh, there's many, many more uh, out there. Uh, if you go on the internet, I'm sure you can find, but there are people out there who can help. Uh, Farming Connect particularly, obviously, uh, will, will be uh, critical um, for advice and guidance, uh, but also uh, people like Wood Northern Wales and Colin for ourselves, Institute of Chartered Foresters and some commercial companies uh, also. So, Dil Khabar. Uh, thank you very much. Um, that's the end of the presentation. I'm happy to take questions. Uh, happy to see how you can make the news all over. Yeah, hello, Yuan. Thank you very much, uh, Yuan. Um, as a, a lot of information um, in uh, in that. And um, welcoming now. Uh, happy for you to send your questions in. Uh, if you have any questions, there's a couple. Uh, that I've got here uh, been sent in beforehand. You're talking about obviously from the uh, the market, the price, etc. Key messages: um, woodland management, sustainable woodland management, and getting that right. Um, how I mean, would you um, talk to to farmers who are questioning? Well, we've only got you know five acres or five acre block of conifer uh, and they were looking for a market for it. How would you uh, answer them with regards to um, their approach in the market to, to sell that block, that smaller block? Well, with the smaller blocks, it's always, it's always very difficult uh, in, in terms of uh, marketing your timber. But um, what I would say is that you, 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 you need to take some advice uh, you need to make sure that you're um, getting uh, impartial advice in terms of what's best to do. Uh, and, and one of the sources of that advice would be the Institute uh, of Chartered Foresters. Um, uh, you know, there is a list of consultants who can come out uh, and provide that advice and guidance. Uh, and even if there's a, you know, if, even if there's a cost to that, then. Uh, I would believe that you will get that value back uh, in, in, in how you sell your timber. So um, they will, will be able to advise um, on um, how best to market the timber and, uh, and what the local markets are. And you know, also in terms of costs, um, with these small woodlands, often it's the cost uh, of bringing machinery in. Um, to fell the timber and so on is is uh, is um, you know is higher than when you've got larger blocks uh, proportionally. So um, yeah, it's uh, you should always think about the potential to add value yourself and to utilise the timber yourself on the farm as well. Question um, Sut fysych chi efo'r costa uh, tynnu coed allan i ochr ffordd uh, yn dilyn y gwympo? Um, mae'n bwysig felly meddwl am ddylunio yn gywir pen da chi'n plannu, os da chi'n edrych ymlaen, uh, dwi'n gwybod y cyfnod yn hir iawn, ond um, y pe i ddisgwyl am y goed tyfu ymlaen ac yn y blaen â rheoli. Ond mae'n mynediad i'r coed ma'n yn bwysig yfyd, hafodol bwysig yfyd. Oh, ndi, ndi, ndi. Ma, sy'n i'n deud, ma, 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 ma mynediad i'r goedwig neu'r goedlan uh, yn holl bwysig, um, a ma'n un o'r achosion sydd yn achosi problemau uh, mwy na ddim byd arall, os dydd ddim byd wedi cael eu gynllunio yn y lle cyntaf. So, os mae'r wyn yn meddwl uh, plannu coed neu um, uh, creu coedwig newydd, um, mae eisiau hwn gael eu gysidro, um, a mae eisiau meddwl bod um, Lorries, coed, and bawr, 
six wheel of drags, the Arctic, and um, the Orbot, Dodi Ochor, a Goidwig, the Iman, and Simon and Gashikal, Gabal or a Coid. I give him Dod Lauer E. Continua at a Arcal Barn Professional in Lina A. Continua. Yeah, dear Huan. In Arachama, Maruin Shaikler had or ever jargon, but be my bars and lucky. Right. Well, don't go to see so in a Kuruina. Be my Genechidi, can it go on now? Means go on now, do not dear Gwarniad Moya. And my Gidin Aider or Marsologs in the Goyf centimeter up and the I went to the indicator in the Goyf, the Mar Hineder Bars, a vessel just coid sit and fly a bint at their bars. I'm a mint email e Gunner Gwarno. I went to the Fincher, I went to the Croisia Trouse of her bars, three bints, the Bernie Basin Tally or a Mafesh Mafachnat. So just a fluid mint Gwarno, the Maritan Award or Savon, a Maritan Award and Seath, the Gid. I've actually just just um, cut a good one on it. Any um, a question I have and so I'm dark at the water. Our coven and go in the bottle. Um, a taking a terrace for the Hikor, our coven and a pen down on so on. I'm um, at the latte at the high for the act. We are going to blind. And do, do, um, do not all, um, to my mar, mar, do we dance, uh, Sennol and Bauer are going to work this on the base in Horse Boysig are going to do a deep on the end planning we are going to do. Up on the heavy and planning could we go or or math sit a angen kind of arch not heavy. I'm in a bit of a draw story at all or could we go can end it could we go sit in a kind of thing called metal. Ma, I'm not a lot of time I'm a type for the outway. I'm not a stem men now with the type for the outway. I'm not a coid. And we are faithful on good security and street ends. I'm not a lot of question. I have a lot of fermid, a fermid, evo, coid lana, a block here, cascotti, a bessie. Mewn cwm neu dyffryn yn ymwneud ag gilydd. Ydych chi'n hapus i'n siarad yn ymwneud fel clwstwr i drafod archebu y coed neu ydyn nhw'n gorfod cael ei trin un am un lle i'n teigo be. Meddwl am arbed costio yn y pen draw, dwi'n meddwl maen nhw. Ie, na, dos o'r ddim yn rheswm pam gall 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 ffermwr dod at ei gilydd i farchnata'r coed. Dan i'n ymarchnat a coed ar gyfer perchnogion gwahanol fel grŵp a mae hynna'n byddwn i'n dweud yn ychwanegu gwerth. So os mae'r coed bwth yn mili gilydd, mae'r sgêl yr gwaith yn y fe, a felly mae'r coste dod â periannau mewn ac ati yn cael ei siarri o lot yn well. A mae'n neud o yn mwy effeithlon o ran yn ariannol yn enwedig. So, na, dos o ddim byd i nad ei neud, ac fi'n gweud. Ie'n diolch â. Un cwestiwn arall mae hwn yn cyfeirio at y cwmni til hel. Is til hel o'n by Somil, by BSW, and therefore, is there a conflict? Is it no longer working for the landowner? Um, yes, uh, Till Hill is owned by uh, BSW uh, Group, and um, but Till Hill runs as a standalone business. Um, in terms of impartiality, um, then uh, you are assured of that if you're employing a chartered forester, um, and we as professionals have to conduct ourselves according to strict rules and guidance. Um, uh, and code of practice, and um, I, 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 I understand the question, uh, and it's a question we're often asked. Um, but uh, myself, as a, as a forest manager, my, my first 
um, duty is to ensure best value for my client, who is the wooded owner. And um, to do that, uh, we will market the timber uh, to achieve best value. And, um, and all uh, clients uh, can be assured of that uh, impartial um, delivery. Yeah, okay, well, thank you. And the last question um, this morning, what is the current price per tonne? Um, that's a very big question, actually, with different types of product. Well, but, uh, I, if you're talking about something, yeah, I'd roadside. Yeah, I anticipated the question <laughs> would come at some point. Um, I just thought I'd just give you a sort of uh, some guidance and obviously you know uh, this got to come with a bit of health warning in that you know each parcel is judged on its own on its own merits and uh, there's a great variance in terms of prices but if you're thinking about roadside prices so this is timber brought to the roadside stacked correctly bred for an attic or a acid rag to be able to pick up um you're probably looking logs uh, Currently fetching 58 to 65 pounds a ton of weight for softwood logs, so the 18 centimeter plus. Um, your bars are then around about 55 to 60 uh, pounds a ton of roadside. Um, fencing a little bit higher, which is 58 to 65. Um, biofuel 40 to 45 pounds a ton. Um, and I've also looked at some, you know, hardwood prices. I'd, I'd say, you know, you're looking at 55 to 60 pounds a ton of roadside, and obviously your higher value specialist products in all uh, uh, species uh, are going to be, you know, sig significantly higher. You know, when you're, you're marketing uh, plunking oak, then you know you're looking at values of 150 to 250 pounds uh, cubic meter. Uh, as a range, um, some higher, some lower, no doubt, in terms of quality is critical there. So that just gives you a flavour for the current market prices, uh, these roadside prices, and these are just a guide. Uh, and um, as I've said, you know, there's been some, some changes in values over the, over time, and um, uh, each year will, you know, will will change. And um, Fluctuations in prices, but that will give you a reasonable time. Yeah, there's one more question coming. Uh, when looking to identify a block of land to plant, is there a trigger point value where forestry is the viable option ahead of other agri activity? I think um, modeling done in the past, there was a, a, a figure that they were looking at with regards to land purchase. Uh, prior to planting, but, um, yeah, could you comment on that, Ewan? Sorry, I, I lost you there for a second. Can you just repeat the question? Yeah, when looking to identify a block of land to plant, uh, is there a trigger a point value um, where forestry is the viable option uh, ahead of other agri activity? All right. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> what we do when we uh, look at um, uh, buying land as, a, as for, for an investment purpose, then then obviously there are uh, trigger points. Um, but um, to be honest, it's something which has to be appraised uh, correctly. Um, it's not something that I would uh, put a figure on. Um, uh, there are many many aspects that need to be considered when when undertaking a, a proper investment appraisal um and each case needs to be done on its own merits uh, it's it's it, it would be wrong to of me to uh, uh you know to give you a value um, i think what you need to do is you need to speak to some professionals if you've got something in mind or if you want to dis discuss it in more detail Please come and speak to us. And, um, you know, we can, we can speak to investment um, uh, managers who can. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, we'll close the questions there for now. Thank you very much. Dear Hello, Nanikai, Christian, and Vane, Amruan. Dear Hello, Rishi, you